What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitchy Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. I am Pitchy Ninja, and I'm here with that bushy-headed lover boy, Will Leahy. What's happening, Will? Ninja, I was watching some Brewers yesterday because Tobias Myers was throwing a hell of a game, 11 Ks, just enjoying himself out there. But then eventually came in one of Pitching Ninja's all-time favorite pitchers, Devin Williams, who I think throws Pitching Ninja's single favorite pitch, and it's the Airbender. Is it just because Pitching Ninja named the Airbender? I'm not so sure about that, but he is obsessed with it. I don't know why I'm saying he, I'm talking directly to you. <laughs> this has gotten weird. I guess it was for the audience, but... Yeah, Devin Williams came in. Uh, he absolutely dominated. His ERA now is sub two. And the Brewers are a little bit of a problem because they're going to be in the postseason. They're going to win the NL Central and could be quite formidable in the postseason. So, Ninja, it's good to see Devin Williams back in, in full Williams form. Tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, arguably as good or better than ever. It's hard to say better than ever because his rookie year was absolutely ridiculous. But he threw a 2,970 RPM airbender yep a change up with nearly 3000 rpms 30 rpms short of it this was the most rpms of any change up all year that got a swing and miss i don't understand how anybody hits it this pitch is an absolute unicorn pitch and will you asked is it my favorite pitch because i named it it's one reason i'm a change up aficionado again i've done change up lists going through the, all 40 years of change ups Everybody talks about Pedro's changeup, rightfully so. Trevor Hoffman had a great changeup. Greg Maddox, great changeup. Johan Santana, lots of them in history. I think Devin Williams has the best changeup in the entire history of baseball. It's the most unique pitch. I put a tail on it so you can see that drop on it. I also overlaid it with the fastball that he followed up this changeup with. And you can see why hitters would have such a hard time on it. He has a 54.7% whiff rate on his changeup this year. Opponents are slugging 087 against it. Absurd stuff. Williams ended up king the side. Absolute filth. Next time he comes in, make sure to watch him. And you mentioned the Brewers. My one concern about the Brewers, Will, is I don't know that their starting pitching is as fearsome as some teams, but... And again, I've doubted the Brewers all year, and they've done nothing but make me pay for it. Now for the rest of my whip around the league, we're going to start with DJ Hurd. <laughs> with five days and five no-hit innings, as the Nats beat the Pirates 5-3. to three. He had these fastballs, including this painted fastball, and this slider for a sword, as well as this changeup. He faced Luis Ortiz, who had two Ks and five and two-thirds innings, giving up three earned runs. At this 97 mile an hour fastball. In the second half of the doubleheader, Mitch Keller had eight Ks and six innings, giving up only two runs. He had this 97 mile an hour painted fastball, this curveball and sweepers, and still it wasn't good enough for the Pirates to beat the Nats because the Nats beat the Pirates eight to six. Aroldis Chapman blew the game. Womp womp. Keller faced Mitchell Parker, who had five Ks and three and a third innings, giving up four runs. He had the splitter, slider for a sword, and curveball. Clark Schmidt had two Ks and four and two thirds scoreless innings as the Yankees blanked the Cubs two to nothing. He had these cutters. He faced Javier Assad, who had five Ks and five and two thirds innings, giving up one earned run in this front door two seamer, this back door two seamer, this painish cutter and sweeper. The Rays stung the Orioles seven to one. Ryan Pepio had four Ks and five and a third innings, giving up one run. This upper 90s fastball, this changeup. He faced Zach Eflin, who had four Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up three runs, and had these cutters. Brennan Hennefy was the opener yesterday in one K and two-thirds scoreless innings with this fastball. He tagged team with Brand Herder, who went five and a third innings with three Ks, giving up only one run, and this changeup in sweepers as the Tigers beat the A's two to one. And they faced Brady Basso, who had six Ks and six scoreless innings, giving up three hits. He had this slider. And absolutely beautiful curveballs. Look at these things. It reminds you of another lefty A's pitcher, Barry Zito. So I matched them up. Barry Zito, Brady Basso, side by side. And look at this. That's pretty darn close. You say Kikuchi. You say. Had six Ks and six innings, giving up four runs as the Astros shot past the D-backs 11 to 5. He had these fastballs and sliders. 
He faced Eduardo Rodriguez, who had 1K in four innings, giving up four earned runs and had this elevated fastball. The Marlins swam past the Phillies, 9-5. to five. Darren McCracken, no relation to Will's favorite, Phil McCracken. Or Ern McCracken, or Barry McCockener, for that matter. <laughs> had four Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up two earned runs. He had this elevated fastball and this front door two-seamer. He faced Aaron Nola, who had five Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up four earned runs. He had this backdoor two-seamer and knuckle curves. Jack Leiter had six Ks in five innings, giving up three runs. He had this 98-mile-an-hour heater and these dirty curveballs and picked up a sword. He's able to keep the Rangers around and looked pretty solid yesterday as the Rangers beat the Angels 6-4. to four. A really good outing from Jack Leiter, I thought, despite the three runs. The Rangers beating the Angels was not Tyler Anderson's fault, though, because Tyler Anderson had seven Ks and five innings, giving up one earned run on one hit. And his fastball, changeup, and cutter. And also in Rangers news, Jacob deGrom pitched yesterday in the minor leagues. And did Jacob deGrom stuff. Looks really good. He's ready to pitch. I think we can call this prospect up to the major leagues, Will. I think he's going to be a good one. He's got the stuff. The Mets shut out the Reds yesterday, four to nothing. The Mets don't ever lose anymore. They just don't. Nine in a row for the Amazons. Will's Mets had Jose Quintana on the mound, and Quintana had six Ks and six and two-thirds scoreless innings. He had these fastballs, picked up a sword in this changeup. He faced Jacob Junis, who had five Ks and five scoreless innings, giving up one run, hit his fastball, and absolutely wicked slider for a sword. Will's lesser team... The Red Sox beat them stinky old White Sox 7-5. to five. Garrett Crochet had three Ks in two innings, giving up four runs for the White Sox, only threw 51 pitches. He had this fastball, changeup, and sweeper. He faced Cooper Chriswell, who pitched well, but had no Ks. So I have to skip him, Will. I'm sorry. Sox are four games back from the wild card. Uh, it's not looking great, but, you know, if they keep playing the White Sox the rest of the season, then um, we might have a shot at this thing, Ninja. Bailey Ober had seven strikeouts and seven scoreless innings, giving up only one hit and no walks. He was outstanding and had this slider, cutter, and changeups. He has a 39% whiff rate on his changeup this year. He is absolutely brilliant, and still, the Twins lost to the Royals 4-2. to two. Faced Alec Marsh, who had five Ks and five innings, giving up two runs, had these curveballs and sweepers, and picked up a sword. The Dodgers beat the Guardians seven to two, and I've got bad news for you, Will. Neither starting pitcher had any case, so no highlights from this game. Well, the Dodgers used an opener. The Guardians used Gavin Williams. They should have used I, an opener. Should have used an opener. Gavin Williams got absolutely shelled. I'm telling you, he's going to be a good pitcher, Will. I'm going to die on that hill. Apparently, literally, if I bet on it, I would be dead. Six run first inning for the Dodgers did not help Williams. Pitch two thirds of an inning. That'll leave a mark on one ZRA. The Blue Jays flew past the Braves nine to five. And you know what that means, Will? Jose Barrios had five Ks in six innings, giving up one run. He had this sinker, change up, and slurves and picked up a sword. Here's an overlay of his two seamer and slurve. And you can see why that combo is deadly. He faced Spencer Schwellenbach. Let's go to Schwellenbach, Texas. Selby, Raymond, Freely, and the boys. Schwelly had three Ks in five innings, but gave up six runs, three of them earned. And it wasn't command related. He just didn't have his stuff. He had no walks, but still gave up a bunch of hits. Did have this fastball, slider, and curveball. It's sad. He got Schwellen rocked. It was not a Schwell outing for him. The Giants stomped the Padres 6-3. to three. It's a good pitching matchup between Logan Webb and Dylan Cease, but it didn't come out on the field that well. Logan Webb had three Ks in six innings, giving up three runs, and had these sinkers. Dylan Cease had four Ks in six innings, giving up four runs, and had this fastball and slider, but really not the pitcher's duel I was looking forward to. Now, in a real pitcher's duel, Kyle Gibson had nine Ks and six and two-thirds scoreless innings. The cards shut out the Mariners two to nothing. He had this beautiful front door two-seamer to Cal Raleigh. And remember we were talking the other day about how Cal Raleigh loves calling front door two-seamers? Well, 
You live by the sword, you die by the sword. Gibson also had this changeup and sweepers. He faced Logan Gilbert, who was really, really good yesterday with 10 strikeouts and in eight innings, giving up only two runs on two hits. The two runs are on a two-run home run, so guess what? They don't count. So Logan Gilbert basically threw a scoreless outing. He had this 99-mile-an-hour heater, this slider, snuckle curve, and dirty splitter. In the starting pitching outing of the day yesterday, Tobias Myers, the Amish ace, had 11 strikeouts in six innings, giving up one run as the Brewers hopped over the Rockies, 5-2. to two. He had these fastballs, including this painted fastball. He had 10 swings and misses on his heater yesterday. He also had these change-ups and slider. He faced Ty Block, who had 1K in three and two-thirds innings, but gave up five runs out of this painted two-seamer. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Camilo Duvall had these sliders and picked up a sword. Kyle Finnegan had this nasty slider. Jason Foley had this 98-mile-an-hour sinker. Kenley Jansen had this cutter. Nestor Cortez had this nasty changeup. Blake Trinan had these filthy sliders and sinkers. I did this quick overlay of this sinker and slider. Yes, the artist formerly known as the witch still got it. And Alex Vessia had this slider and fastball and got absolutely fired up. I mean, we all need some Alex Vessia in our lives every morning instead of coffee. My top five filthiest pitches of the day yesterday. At number five, we have Brady Basso and his curveballs and that matchup against Barry Zito. And number four, Ryan Helsley for these ridiculous sliders. He picked up a sword with it. Slider is so deadly. And number three, the Amish ace, Tobias Myers for all his stuff. And number two, this sweeper from Danny Young that broke over two feet. Yep, that's 25 inches on this sweeper. And at number one, who else but Devin Williams and his airbender. This thing was absolutely disgusting, a total alien pitch. And yes, Will, it is my favorite pitch in baseball. And now my pitching ninja moment of Zen. Look at this fan doing the double chop. I mean, he's really committed to it. He's even got double chop written on the back of his jersey. It actually looks like Peter Moylan a little bit. My picks of the day today, I'm going to start out with Luis Castillo for 5Ks or more, then take Jack Flaherty for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Chris Sale for 7Ks or more and the Braves to win. What would your picks of the day be?